How's it going out there, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. I'm your host, Cash. Welcome to the channel. This is Trucker News. It's the cool kids like to say hashtag Trucker News. Yes, sir. This is it. I'm an illiterate truck driver. I'm going to read the news stories to you that I think are, well, the ones that ought to be read to you, frankly. Let's start off with some good ones here. Let's go over what we got. We got $19,000 fine issued for an overweight violation. Truck driver arrested hours later for defying the out of service. Woo, that's an expensive ride. CHP wants to remind truckers to obey California's 55-mile-an-hour speed limit. They're watching for you. Companies left waiting on Tesla semi-trucks they paid for years ago. Ouch. Dealership owner sentenced for disabling emission controls on 244 vehicles. Damn it, boy. That's going to be expensive. Cashier asked the truck driver if he needed an ambulance after he won the lottery. Come on. Heck yeah, the driver won the lottery. I love to hear stuff like that. We got the opinion piece of the day. Hot dogs have been scattered across I-65 in an early morning semi-rack. Damn it. Prime's to blame. It's a prime truck. I've already seen the photos. All right, let's get down to the news. Here we go. $19,000 fine issued for an overweight violation. Truck driver arrested hours later for defying the out-of-service order. This is how this works, apparently. Police in Oregon issued a large fine for an overweight violation and then arrested a truck driver two hours later for operating, operating while out of service. And damn it, boy, the incident began shortly after 7 a.m. on April 10th. Deputies pulled over a tractor trailer in Northwest Jackson School Road in Washington County, Oregon. The road carries a 13-ton weight limit Woo! to preserve the road quality and ensure safe operation. Deputies discovered that the truck weighed 89,000 pounds, which made it 63,000 pounds over the permissible weight for the road. Deputies then proceeded to issue a $19,400 fine for the weight violation. Gulp. Uh, also, during the traffic stop, deputies reported that 23-year-old Washington-based truck driver David Barakar falsified his logbook. Oh, this guy's in all kind of mess. Here's what the cops had to say about it. Barakar additionally appeared extremely fatigued and was observed dozing off during the stop, which led to him being placed out of service due to critical safety risk posed by his insufficient rest and apparent fatigue. Despite the order, Barakar was arrested less than two hours later by another commercial motor vehicle enforcement deputy while operating his vehicle on Highway 26 for knowingly violating the out-of-service directive. Whoo, boys. Yes, sir. Uh, he got him a gold Volvo pulling a container there. That's what we're dealing with. CHP wants to remind truckers to obey California's 55-mile-an-hour speed limit. What? A trucker's going over 55-mile-an-hour in California? I don't think this is true. We'll see. Let's see what it says. California Highway Patrol is warning lead-footed truckers to slow down and obey the state's commercial vehicle speed limits. CHP Reading recently encountered a truck hauling an oversized load traveling at 70 miles an hour, well over the commercial me commercial motor vehicle limit of 55 miles per hour. Per hour, troopers took advantage of the incident to remind truckers to slow down. Trooper said, for those of you who asked if we enforce big rig speeding, the answer is yes. Although we can't catch them all, as there is a lot more of them than there are of us, we do our best to enforce the 55 mile per hour max speed limit for big rigs and combination vehicles. Just This is just one stop of several on the day. Woo, yes sir, they riding it up, they say. All right, companies left waiting for Tesla semi-trucks they paid for years ago. Multiple companies are still waiting on their Tesla semi-trucks they ordered and paid for years ago as full-scale production continues to get pushed back. Tesla semi-truck was out on display on 2017 with promises for production to begin in 2019. Now, five years later, a mere 36 
of the 125 ordered electric semis have been delivered to Pepsi, and even those trucks weren't delivered until 2022, three years later. Now Pepsi is using 15 of the delivered electric trucks at its Modesto facility and 21 in Sacramento. 32 of the electric semi-trucks were paid for by the $20 million state grant, and federal subsidies helped to pay to put in $40,000 per additional electric rig. Oh, my God. Government, I'm buying these electric trucks, apparently. Pepsi isn't the only company left waiting on their new fleet to be delivered. UPS, FedEx, and more are still waiting on the Tesla electric semi they ordered. Tesla is currently using 100 electric Tesla semi-trucks to transport battery packs between Nevada and California Tesla facilities, but says that there just weren't enough batteries to fully launch into volume production of the electric rig. However, Musk still claims that 2024 is the battery problem gets solved. Mm, We'll see. We'll see. That old Musk guy, he likes to talk a big game, but uh, don't always deliver on time. His time frame's off. His internal clock's not right, I guess. Uh, The dealership owner sentenced for disabling emission controls on 244 vehicles. A New York man was sentenced after he admitted to violating the Clean Air Act by disabling emission controls on hundreds of diesel vehicles. On April 19, 2024, Matthew R. Talamo, 38, was sentenced to Four years of probation and a $50,000 fine. Talamo previously pled guilty to conspiracy to violate the Clean Air Act. Talamo is the owner slash operator of Southern Diesel Truck Company and Southern Diesel and Off-Road LLC in Oswego, New York. The company specialized in buying, reselling, and performing aftermarket modifications to diesel vehicles. Officials say that between January 2018 and November 2022, Southern Diesel tampered with emission control monitoring devices and systems of approximately 244 vehicles. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, For the Northern District of New York, Telemo admitted to tampering with emission controls, monitoring devices, and methods on diesel pickups, including both software and hardware modifications. The software modifications called Tunes and Deletes involved Telemo tampering with onboard diagnostic systems and disabling emission controls. The hardware modifications, Telemo admitted to uh, removing tailpipes, mufflers, and other exhaust components and replacing them with so-called straight pipes. The lack of diesel particulate filters and other systems designed to reduce emissions. Yes, and they're going to throw the they're going to throw the hammer at him. Uh, Cashier asked if a trucker needed an ambulance after a lottery win. Yeah, here we go. Truck driver was so shocked about his lottery win that the cashier asked if he needed an ambulance at a truck stop in Kentucky. Truck driver Tommy Hinton made a stop at the Pilot Travel Center's on. Free Henry Road in Madisonville, Kentucky, as part of his normal workday routine when he decided to buy a $10 100 times the cash Kentucky Lottery scratch-off. When Hinton scratched the ticket and revealed his $225,000 win, even the cashier noticed something about him had changed. The clerk asked me if I was okay if I needed an ambulance. Hinton said to the Tri-State homepage. I said no, and then showed her the amount on the machine. His eyes popped out and were big as saucer, she says. After taxes, Hinton collected a total of $162,000. He says his plans to use the funds to pay off bills, complete some home renovations, and donate to his church. He said, I plan to act like I don't have it. He said, I'm blessed. There you go. Pilot Travel Centers will also receive $2,250 for selling the winning ticket because we all know they need the money. Yeah, right. I hate this story right here. This is this is the worst story of the day. Hot dogs have been scattered across I-65 in early morning semi-wreck. Damn it, Prime. Come on, Prime. Uh, hot dogs scattered across the Kentucky interstate after a semi-truck detached from its trailer early on Friday morning. Ooh, that don't sound good. The accident happened on Friday the 19th about 1 a.m. on Interstate 65 near the Interstate 64-Interstate 71 interchange in downtown Louisville. 
According to the local news, the semi-truck struck the barrier wall on I-65, which caused the trailer to rip apart. Dang it. A large portion of the trailer then tumbled off of the ramp and flipped over onto the roadway below. Damn it. Damn it. The wreck scattered a load of hot dogs, creating a lot of debris crews to clear. No one was hurt in the accident. The reason for the crash into the barrier was unclear. Lanes of 65 were shut down near 64 interchange and interstate 71 interchange. As crew works to clear the hot dogs scattered everywhere and destroyed the trailer, the roadway was reopened at 8.30. And all I got to say about that is, uh-oh, hot dog. <laughs> Yo, and that is Trucker News, folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you made it this far, give me the old like button. Think about becoming a subscriber. I'd much appreciate it. And come join me for a live show. Those are lots of fun. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care of each other out there. Remember, people are more important than trucking. Hi, I want to talk to you real quick about the ES Advantage card. Do you need discounts at major truck stop chains? They got them. Do you need discount on shop rates at TA and Love? They got them. Tire discounts. They even got health insurance now. Click the link down below. Easy application. No credit check. Sign up. They give you a call back. They'll take all your information, and you'll be in the network.